Good afternoon. It is Eric Arnold, once in a while, known as the Big E here in the politics barn. Thought I'd get you an episode here in the politics barn. It's uh, December 2nd, uh, Wednesday. Let's see, what time is it? Oh, around 3.30. Wanted to get you a video earlier this week. Kind of waited till the day. I wanted to get up earlier today. And then I saw that, uh, I saw it billed as a press conference. Uh, Sidney Powell and Lynn Wood were going to have a press conference today. Well, it was nothing of the sort. It was uh, a rally, if you will. Uh, Two attorneys holding a rally. Um, I didn't see any convincing legal arguments during the rally, uh, so I was disappointed by that. Um, I wanted to get an announcement to you before we... uh, before I start rambling on. And I, you know, if you're looking for some big news in this episode, there, there is none. You know, there's just, uh, you know, me speculating on a, some of the Pennsylvania turnout here, uh, examining that, and then maybe just uh, some more thoughts about how the results have come out. Um, but the announcement is uh, the politics barn is moving. We're going to move the politics barn off of YouTube I think that's just natural. Uh, Right now, I want to talk about sports and handicapped sports, which is what I've always wanted to do. And I don't want my controversial opinions to get me kicked off YouTube, or at least my handicapping kicked off of YouTube. So we're going to move the politics barn, I believe, to Rumble. I don't know. I've done exactly no research, practically. You know, I, I've seen a couple of places. Rumble, uh, that is a free speech friendly uh, bit shoot, perhaps. Uh, I, I don't know why I fixated on Rumble. Uh, if you got any opinions about that or preferences, put it in the comments. Uh, I'd appreciate it. Uh, like I said, I've done about no research. We'll probably run a few more episodes here on YouTube. And then we'll just move the whole thing over to Rumble, where I could say, well, you know, look, the main issue right now in this country has nothing to do with the election, frankly. I mean, I, I would say it's a fact that we're going to wear masks for the rest of our natural lives. Is that what we want to do? It's not what I want to do, but that's the way it's going. That's what's going to happen uh, unless we do something about it. But I can't talk about that here on YouTube because I'll get kicked off. So, you know, YouTube censors, just, you know, set that aside, set that aside. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Goodbye, YouTube. You don't want me. I don't want you. It's been fun. So, Rumble. Yeah, that's where the politics barn is going. For all I know, it basically looks like the same thing as YouTube, except no one knows it's there. Uh, except people that would talk about things like we talk about, so, which is perfect. So, I figure Rumble sounds like the place to go. All right, uh, so what do we have for you this episode here? I've been trying to figure out, you know, it, 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 I'm in Pennsylvania. I'm familiar with the Pennsylvania election results. I'm familiar with the Pennsylvania voting trends and what have you. Demographics and whatnot. And it's, uh, forgive me if uh, my voice is... Uh, not clear, or I have a runny nose, or what have you. The barn is unheated, uh, news flash, and it's no longer warm and windy like it was Monday. It's now cold and crummy like it normally is in early December here in Pennsylvania. So we're outdoors, and we'll just do the best we can here. Uh, but I'm familiar with the Pennsylvania voting trends and what have you, and I've been trying to figure out how, if the Democrats did cheat. How and where did they cheat? In other words, can I find evidence where I can point to that and go, that's wrong. Now I'm confident that they cheated here. And, you know, I, I, as I said, I briefly listened to some of the Powell slash Wood rally today and I was totally unimpressed. Just, you know, the only thing I heard of any interest to me was that Powell, Sidney Powell, is basically stating that the software 
from the Dominion machines is used in all of the election machines. Uh, there's probably 10 different varieties and companies uh, that have election machines throughout the country. And these election machines vary county to county. Here in Pennsylvania, there's probably half a dozen different election machines used in all the various 67 counties. Uh, and she's saying that the software uh, in all the machines is similar. And it all derives from this Smartmatic, which I guess is part of this bigger Dominion um, corrupted uh, company. I, 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 you know, she stopped short of saying, oh, and they hacked them all. You know, she kind of said, oh, they could have been all hacked. You know, and, and even there, she almost sounded like she didn't believe her own bullshit. And frankly, that's what I think it is. It's like, all right, I, I, you, if you show me some evidence that Dominion, uh, somebody at Dominion or somebody through Dominion was manipulating results, I might be able to buy that. Uh, but that this conspiracy now extends through nine, ten independent companies that own voting machine companies and voting machine systems, machines, and all of them are, you know, being corrupted. All of them are being manipulated. Yeah, I'm just finding that fantastical. I just... In my analysis of the on-the-ground, nitty-gritty, precinct-by-precinct results here in Pennsylvania, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. Like I said, to me, the results look explainable here in Pennsylvania. I mean, this is what I'm seeing. Um, and this is where I'm kind of going with my hypothesis. Trump has overperformed what he did in 2016 in the cities. Uh, a, a Democrat city, generally, it's not unusual to see 80-20 uh, Democrat votes to Republican votes. Uh, usually the cities are a heavy minority, uh, generally, and uh, uh, those votes skew Democratic. 80-20 uh, is not unusual. Uh, so, for example, here in 16, these are just some of the cities in the east, eastern Pennsylvania. Uh, Trump got about 20% in Lancaster, about 29% in Allentown. He got less than 20% here in Reading, 18.7%. <laughs> and then he got only 15.5% down in Philadelphia. Uh, so, it, you know, that's terrible. Uh, but that's about typical for a Republican candidate. But now here in 20, you know, his uh, percentage has gone up. You know, he's got 24.5% uh, in Lancaster, 32.9% in Allentown, all the way up to 26.7% here in Reading. And then even Philadelphia crept up to 17.9%. Uh, uh, so, you know, the, var the difference between 16 and 20, uh, four points higher in Lancaster, six points higher in Allentown, 14.4 points more here in Reading. And then in Philadelphia, it's only 3.8%. And that's the where I'm kind of focusing on in that I think those numbers should be higher. I think those numbers are being depressed because they stuffed the ballot boxes down in Philadelphia. Um, turnout-wise, uh, the turnout now in town, uh, eh, a little higher. That's an estimate. I haven't had time to dig out the actual registration numbers. That's just an estimate. Uh, that's, uh, that's right. Turnout actually went down here in Reading. Uh, in this actual city of Reading, the turnout went down from 16 to 20, despite all of the efforts of the state to drive out turnout, to uh, provide mail-in balloting, what have you. It still didn't matter. Turnout went down. Um, which I find totally explainable. Uh, if you're talking about a, a, a minority community and there's no real interest to them on the ballot, in other words, I'm a Hispanic guy and I got two tired old white guys out there, what do I care? I mean, why am I getting out of bed to go vote for either one of those guys? I don't care. You know, same if I'm an African-American dude. 
there's no black guy on the ticket. Why am I getting out to vote for one of these uh, two old white guys? Uh, so I could totally see where turnout would be down or even despite uh, the mail-in balloting, which I think automatically increased turnout, probably 10% across the board. Um, so turnout went up in Philadelphia at 66.4 as compared to 64.2. I find that a little suspicious. I'm not so sure it did go up. Um, but that's where I'm focusing, trying to figure out you know, if I could find actual evidence, hey, you stuffed the ballot boxes. I mean, these are actual vote differences between 16 and 20 for Trump. Uh, he gained 418 votes in Lancaster. He gained 1,481 votes in Allentown. He gained 3,924 votes here in the city of Reading. Uh, and, and if you're saying why, well, uh, Trump did better with Hispanics. He had probably record numbers for a GOP candidate with Hispanics. <laughs> I was discussing this with a, a Biden voting friend of mine, and he was just kind of flummoxed. He's like, well, why would they vote for him? It's like, well, I mean, why wouldn't they? You know, it, it, do you think that they're, they're all trying to get, all the Hispanic people are trying to get their illegal Uncle Tio into the country? I mean, if you're a Hispanic dude in this country and you're voting, that means you're legal. Um, you're probably a blue collar guy. A lot of Trump's uh, policies are geared towards the blue collar uh, protectionism, uh, not sending every last job all over the world if they could do it five cents cheaper. Uh, so maybe there are a few more blue collar jobs now out there. Uh, the economy was doing well. I mean, I've got a friend of mine, uh, uh, Jeff Blue, he's, he's a human resources manager. He can give jobs away. I mean, there you go. You, you put it in the comments. If you're in Eastern Pennsylvania and you want a job, just a job job, pays you money, and you can't find one, you put it in the comments and I'll get you a job. You know, uh, it won't be a great job, but it'll pay you money. Uh, and you'll have the uh, self-respect of going home at night and saying, I earned my money today. I didn't just sit on my ass and have the government send me a check. So uh, there are all kinds of jobs out there right now. And I think maybe Trump is getting some credit from perhaps some Hispanic people for that. Um, so yeah, I could totally see where Trump is, say, more popular than your generic GOP candidate with the Hispanic community. But then after all of that, down in Philadelphia, he's actually lost votes. Uh, where, you know, again, I find that suspicious. That uh, it's like, wait a minute, Donald Trump is doing better in the cities uh, all over the country, except, you know, the one city he absolutely had to have. And there he lost votes. Hmm, I find that suspicious. Um, so, what else does my analysis? You know, Sydney uh, Powell tells me all the voting machines were hacked and the results are all incorrect. Um, well, Trump, uh, uh, he, he held his own or slightly increased his margin of votes in small towns and rural areas. But it wasn't much. It wasn't much. In other words, Probably percentage-wise, it was either even or he lost percentage points. He gained a handful of votes just by d turning out another 100, 200 persons per precinct that hadn't voted before. But those people that he was turning out, you know, that might have been a 55-45 deal. You know, 55 Trump, 45 Biden. It wasn't like he was turning these people out 60 or 80-20. Uh, so, you know, it was a handful more votes, but it wasn't a lot. But where the big difference was is the suburbs. Uh, these huge suburbs. I mean, you know, a whole town of, you know, uh, uh, I'm just... I was just working on Lancaster, so that's fresh in my mind. Like the whole town of, uh, say, uh, Christiana in Lancaster County might have a thousand people in it, 
whereas one precinct of some huge freaking township suburb like Mannheim Township in Lancaster or, uh, say, Exeter Township here in Berks County, they could have 2,000 people in one precinct. And that's where Trump got killed. You know, whereas he might pick up, you know, 10 votes here, 15 votes there, uh, maybe another 20 votes over in Ole. In Exeter Township, he's bleeding 100 votes a precinct, sometimes 150 votes a precinct. It's simply either Democrats that voted for him the first time around going home. Uh, in other words, maybe these Democrats just decided, you know what, uh, I don't know much about Donald Trump here. I know I don't like Hillary Clinton. Um, there's a possibility Donald Trump could be a moderate. Uh, might be pro-gun control. He might, uh, uh, you know, do some liberal things here that we like. Uh, I'll take a shot with Donald Trump. Sure, why not? Uh, and as it turns out, he was mostly a conservative. And those Democrats might have said, "Well, I don't like uh, these uh, conservative judges that are against abortion. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to go home and vote for the Democrat." Uh, it could be old Democrat union people that. Uh, you know, union men that hated Hillary Clinton with good reason, uh, America's ex-wife. Uh, so they might have said, there is no way in hell I'm voting for Hillary Clinton. Uh, but they find a little more warm and fuzzy with old, uh, you know, Democrat, uh, traditional, quote, traditional Democrat, uh, Joe Biden. I don't think there's anything traditional at all about old Joe Biden. I think he's about as far left as you can get. But... Kudos to the Democrat media. They were able to uh, hide his extremist positions, and that's how he was presented. Good old warm and fuzzy Joe. Yes. Yay, union. Go union. Right. Okay. We'll see. But, yeah, so I could totally see where a lot of Democrats went home to Biden, who they found much more appetizing than Hillary Clinton. Uh, so, and, and then you got Republican, like, you know, the women, um, yeah, I totally believe that that was your shy Trump voter. In other words, uh, where was the shy Trump voter, you know, that didn't appear in all the polls? Well, I think in 16, that was your Republican suburban women. Uh, well, I think a lot of those shy Trump voters were now either shy Biden voters or vocal Biden voters. Uh, I think a lot of them just flipped over and Look, I think that it basically what this was was just a referendum on Trump. Uh, that's how I would view it. It, it, it. How do you explain that the Republicans were able to hold, uh, not only hold where they were in the uh, House of Representatives, but they improved by 15 seats. They gained 15 seats. How do you explain that? Uh, there was no blue wave. The Democrats thought here in Pennsylvania, they had, they were thinking they had a good chance to take the state house uh, and flip that blue, but they, you know, they didn't. They didn't make any gains at all. You know, it, it what I thought was remarkable that in a lot of these suburbs in Bucks, Montgomery, Chester County, places Trump got absolutely slaughtered, the Republican who is on the ballot at the same time, the Republican General Assembly member, he wins. That guy wins. It might be 52-48 or 53-47, but that guy won, whereas Trump is losing, you know, he's losing 60-40 in those places. Yet the Republican would win those areas. And that, that I find a little... A little suspicious, it's just that, you know, again, we're back to multiple voting machines over multiple counties, and I'm just finding that just completely, I don't know, I just, I just don't believe that a conspiracy could exist to hack multiple systems. It, it just seems too complicated. I, you know, even Sidney Powell, it's like she hasn't presented evidence that that's happened. She seems to think dominion, 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 and she seems to think that she has some proof to prove that, yet we haven't seen it. So, I don't know. Um, it, 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 I could see how, I know this, and I would be, you know, irritated if I was the Trump team about this. 
All these state reps here in Pennsylvania, oh, this leads to another point. All these state reps here in Pennsylvania, to my knowledge, none of them gave old Donald Trump a warm, fuzzy hug leading up to the election. In other words, it sure would have helped, I think, if some of these guys that were going to win their race 60-40 had just maybe said, hey, you know what? Donald Trump is my guy, and I support him 100%. And you all know me as good old local politician who's in your uh, General Assembly back in your local interests. And you all know and trust me, if I had just come out and said, Donald Trump is my buddy and I'm with him. Yeah, he probably would have lost a few points, but he would have helped Trump a little too. Uh, and to my knowledge, none of, the, none of these guys, I'm, I'm painting probably with a pretty broad brush here, but I don't know of too many that did it. I don't think my local guy, who is running unopposed here, unopposed, he sure as hell didn't do it. I didn't see this guy anywhere in the lead up to the election. Nowhere. Oh, I take that back. I saw him, uh, a friend of mine on Facebook, uh, he was getting, a, 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 I think, an off-ramp over in Gogglersville, and the off-ramp is named for, I think, his great-great-grandfather, something like that. So they had a little ceremony over there, and there's my buddy, uh, uh, Richie, uh, there at the uh, uh, ceremony, and there's my state rep. And I thought, I thought he was dead. I thought he was on a milk carton. Oh, there he is. He exists. You know, so there he is uh, dedicating an off-ramp. Uh, but, you know, as far as, like, uh, uh, appearing at the uh, r rally Trump had here at the Reading Airport. I don't think he was there. I don't think he was. It certainly wasn't in the news. Uh, so, you know, if you were there and uh, no one knows about it, what does it matter? I mean, you know, my point is that these GOP reps were awful quiet in the lead up to this critical, critical election. And I don't think too many of these guys are all that upset that Trump lost. So, you know, and they're... There, that leads into, do you think that the, uh, the General Assembly here in the state of Pennsylvania, which I've been hearing, I think at least one person mentioned it in the comments, is going to like lead this huge rally and they're going to say, okay, we're going to do what's never been done before. We are going to tear up the election results and we're either going to send no electors to... Uh, the Electoral College, or we're going to send our own slate back in Donald Trump. Uh, and, and the Constitution says that we have the power to do it. The uh, legislature says so that's what we're doing. You really think these guys are going to do that? There's no chance in hell they're going to do that. Not a chance in hell. Th these are just normal dudes. These are not ideologues, if you will. Uh, they're not guys that get out of bed in the morning and think about the Constitution. They don't think about this shit. Not at all. They're more worried about having people 100, 200 deep on their lawn planting bombs there or something, which is what would happen if they did that sort of thing. These guys would be targets. They're not, gonna, they're not down for that kind of heat. I think they should be. I'm sure you're saying, well, they should be. Yeah, I agree. They should. I mean, that's their job. And if they think that that kind of fraud took place, then they should do it. They're not going to. They're not going to. It's not going to happen. All right, what else we got here? Well, like I said, that's where I'm focusing my hypothesis. I think that that might be a place you could show that the ballot box was stuffed just by comparing the results in Philadelphia with other major cities, uh, how Trump uh, performed in, uh, yeah, to me, a difference in uh, a Reading or an Allentown or a Lancaster is that these are cities, uh, Lancaster and Reading, that are heavily Hispanic, where um, Reading's heavily Hispanic, Lancaster perhaps not so much, uh, heavily minority. However, uh, the city falls within a Republican county. So the Republicans somewhat have their fingers involved 
in the counting process. Uh, in other words, there may probably is not a Democrat machine cranking out votes in these places like there would be in, a, say, a Philadelphia or a Pittsburgh. So that's where I'd like to see the results in these places and then compare them to the machine places. Uh, I think you can probably do that throughout the country if you got time to do it. Uh, in other words, what is the uh, results in Atlanta compared to, say, uh, I don't know, I I'm not that familiar with Georgia, like a Macon maybe? Uh, what else would be down there that would be a, a smaller city, uh, perhaps a smaller version of Atlanta? Um, Savannah, again, I I'm not that familiar with uh, Georgia. Uh, but yeah, I'd, I'd be curious to see how Trump did in some place like a St. Louis or, or a Kansas City, uh, those type of places, something that replicates somewhat uh, Milwaukee. Uh, you know, how did Trump do in Chicago, for example? Uh, um, I think that's a pretty good uh, copy, a bigger copy perhaps of Detroit or certainly Milwaukee. I, I'd be curious about that. You know, in other words, if Trump did real well, compared to what he did in 16 in Chicago. But then you look at Detroit and Milwaukee, and it's like, well, wait a minute now. Where did all these votes come from all of a sudden in Milwaukee and Detroit, whereas Trump did pretty well in Chicago compared to what he did four years ago? You know, uh, uh, to me, that would be, look, let's face it, 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 it. This is over in about a month, one way or the other. Um, I'm still not optimistic. I just don't see a judge you know, stepping forth and going, you know, you've proven your point. Uh, I just think that, I think pretty much people, with the exception of some uh, some hardcore Trump people, are, uh, you know, getting their arms around, uh, you know, the Biden presidency. One thing Powell was saying today, Sidney Powell said I totally disagreed with, and I thought, oh my God. She was talking about not voting in the Georgia runoffs because the voting machines are hacked, suspect, corrupted, owned by the Chinese. It's like, Jesus Christ, what in the hell are you talking about? It, it, it's almost like I'm going to cut my nose off to spite my face. It, it, things aren't so bad at the moment because the Republicans have probably held the line in the Senate there's two seats, in case you've been under a rock or asleep, two seats are going to be decided the first week in January in a runoff election, and they're both in Georgia. Two Senate seats. If the Democrats get both of them, they have the Senate. They have the House. They have the Senate. They have the presidency. They can do whatever the hell they want. They can do whatever they want. Anything. They could do anything. And they basically have said verbatim, Everything is on the table. I think that's a quote from Chuck Schumer, Senate future to become majority leader. Holy shit, Sidney Powell. Are you really saying don't vote in the most important runoff election in American history? Oh, man. You know, oh, good Lord. You know, like that's going to prove something. Uh, all the conservatives stay home for the runoff election in Georgia. That'll show them, you know, that uh, uh, we'll just take our ball and go home and surrender. Uh, and meanwhile, just hand over, well, hand over everything. I mean, like I said, if those guys have got everything, the House, the Senate, the White House, and they've pretty much made it clear, at least a large vocal part of that party, they mean to do the most radical communistic things they can think of stuff the Supreme Court, do away with the Second Amendment, and we're just going to let them? Jesus, Sidney Powell. Good Lord. So, yeah, if you live in Georgia, my God, vote! Christ! I mean, that's all you can do. You know, you just don't worry about it. Here, what about this? Just, what if Sidney Powell is wrong and those Dominion machines are correctly tabulating results? And you're going to sit home, assuming she's right? You better get your ass out there, because there's just that much chance she could be wrong. Jesus. I, I, I just found that incredible. Just, ugh. Oh, well. I mean, whatever's going to happen, I guess it's going to happen. 
so I'll make my videos, I guess. Maybe that'll be the next few series of videos. I'll have to educate myself about, well, let's face it, you'll never hear anything negative about the Georgia candidate. So I guess that's the function of the barn is to bring out uh, whatever there is about these candidates, good or bad. Let's put this, or let's, I'll bring out what you don't know, which will certainly be about the Democrat candidates. Um, if uh, the Senator Purdue from Georgia uh, ever cheated at golf, kicked the ball forward and didn't take a stroke, I guarantee you know about it on NBC News. But, you know, if, if, if one of those Democrat candidates, um, you know, has a vacation home in Beijing, you won't know that. I guarantee you won't know that. So I doubt he does. But if he does, hopefully I'll be able to find that out. Anyway, I don't know, that's about all I got here for you. I just noticed that my little clock there that I used to time myself, the battery's dead. It's like, oh, wait a minute, that time that hasn't moved, it's the same time. Eh, all right, well, that's all I got. You know, um, like I said, uh, uh, big announcement, we're moving over to Rumble. I don't know, I'm gonna to try to post this video on Rumble at some point. I, I just gotta figure it out, I gotta sign up. I guess it's probably not that hard. It's just a matter of sitting there and doing it. Um, so anyway, I appreciate all the subscribers that are still here, that still uh, wanna hear me talk. Uh, I still find that somewhat flattering. I uh, appreciate uh, uh, any supportive comments that you have, uh, any constructive criticism, um, and, and uh, hey, let's, uh, you know, keep the faith, uh, keep the faith, and uh, we'll talk to you again. Thanks. From me to you, out.